Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. A while back I showed you guys how to make these glass marble pendants and I also showed you how to make wire bales so you didn't have to spend money on bales for the marbles. Now this project I made it extremely inexpensive. I bought the marbles from the dollar store, I recycled paper from sales ads and magazines and I made this extremely cheap so everybody can make it and all the materials were really easy to find. Now if you haven't seen this video I will leave a link down there in the description bar for it and for this tutorial I will be doing another project with these marbles. I will be using the smaller ones though and I'm gonna show you how to make a ring with them but instead of putting paper on the back of these marbles I'm gonna do something else to them and they are gonna look so pretty so here are the marble rings that I've already made and when you go to select your marbles to do this I found that the smaller ones and the clearer ones are best to use so I, I've, I like the clear ones most because you can change uh, their color so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clear marbles, these ones here work great too because they're very transparent, and I'm going to do a treatment to them, and it's going to cause them to have a crackled appearance on the inside. And then once you have the crackled look on the inside, you can decide where you want to go from there. You can either glue this directly onto the ring blank that I'm going to show you how to make, and it'll look like this ring here. This is just a clear marble. I have no uh, paint on the back of it. Or you can paint it. Now, all of these marbles here are clear. All I did was paint the back of the marble to give it a different look. So that's why I say the clear ones seem to be best. Um, this one here, of course, it's going to stay blue when you use it. And this one here is actually the same color as this marble. I just painted the back of it to enhance this blue color more. So this one here was a clear marble, and I took a dark blue nail polish and I painted the back of it. And then I glued on the ring blank I made. This one here was this color. I painted it on the back and I love how this one looks. It's so pretty. And then I just glued my ring blank onto that. This one I used green nail polish and this is what my ring turned out to look like. And This is also the clear marble. This one here I took a dark purple nail polish and I painted the back of it and that's how I got that look. This one I took a peach color nail polish and I painted the back of it and I got this look. Now, if you don't want to go through this crackling treatment, you don't have to. You can just put a paper on the back of your marble and do a ring like this if you want to. Here is the material list you will need to make these rings. You will need two feet of 20 gauge wire or 22 gauge. So you can use a 20 gauge or 22 gauge. It's up to you, whatever you have. Now, the kind of wire you use it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want. You can use artistic wire, you can use craft wire, copper wire, whatever you want. Now, I don't know if all of you have noticed this or not, but craft stores have been selling aluminum wire. So what I did is I just went to the hardware store and I got aluminum wire on a gigantic spool since the craft stores are selling it on small uh, spools. So anyways, here is my gigantic spool. Here you can see this is the other end of the wire. So that is how much wire I have on this spool. And this spool is massive. So um, I bought this spool at Harbor Freight. And it was on sale at the time. But later on I went to Home Depot and I saw the same exact wire for a lot cheaper. Cheaper than what I got on sale. So I recommend that if you're going to use the aluminum wire to buy it at Home Depot. It's very cheap there. And I want to say that it doesn't say what gauge it is on um, the sticker. I want to say that is it is either a 20 or a 22 gauge wire. Now I've used this wire on all my rings and I love the results of it. The wire doesn't discolor. It stays silver and you can work hard in it. So um. Don't worry about it being too soft because you think aluminum, oh, it's going to be really soft wire to work with. You can work hard in the aluminum wire. I love this stuff. And it is a lot easier to work with than the artistic wire because whenever I make rings with this stuff, uh, this wire is very springy and it wants to go back to uh, the shape it was before. So I really do adore this aluminum wire. 
Now you're also going to need flat back marbles, and again, clear seems to be the best because you can change it. You're also going to need an E6000 glue, and the cheapest place that I have found this glue is at Walmart. It's like $2 and something, $3. And um, Walmart has this kind with the pointed nozzle. Some places uh, sell it where it's like a toothpaste tube, and it you know has a short just a screw on hole it doesn't have the long nozzle so you can uh, carefully apply the glue to whatever you're gluing so again Walmart has that very cheap if you want to get it there you're also going to need nail polishes and whatever colors you want and you're going to need a nylon hammer this side is nylon this side is rubber I use this side a lot more than this side um, I bought this hammer at AC Moore and I had a coupon for it the hammer was already cheap to begin with though but um after I bought an AC Moore, I noticed that Walmart had this same exact hammer, and I think it was the same price as AC Moore. You're also going to need a ring mandrel, and you can buy this at Walmart or AC Moore. And you will also need wire cutters and chain nose pliers. So most of the stuff I have here you can buy at Walmart except for this wire you'll have to buy it at Home Depot but hey maybe you already have a 20 gauge or a 22 gauge wire that you can use right now so you probably already have a lot of this stuff that I'm showing you here. So this is the material list and I'll put all this stuff down there in the description bar and I'm hoping that I'm not forgetting any materials. I'm kinda of thinking I might be forgetting one thing but I'm not sure so check down there in the description bar to see all the materials and writing there are two different ways to crackle your marbles one way is in the oven and the other way is on top of your stove now if you're gonna do it in the oven I recommend that you use a stainless steel pan not a non-stick pan. Now if you have an old non-stick pan that the coating is chipping off of and there's burnt marks in it, then go ahead and use it because it's not going to be good for food. So I went ahead and I put my marbles in my stainless steel pan and if you want you can do huge batches in the oven. You can fill this entire pan with marbles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set my oven to 500 and I'm going to let it reach that temperature. And once it gets to 500, I'll go ahead and put the pan in. When your oven reaches 500, go ahead and put your marbles into the oven and then set a 20 minute timer, okay? And while your marbles in the oven, go ahead and get a bowl, either a metal bowl or a plastic bowl, fill it with water and ice. And if you want, you can sit this in the freezer so it doesn't melt on you. So when your 20 minute alarm goes off in your oven, go ahead, put a mitten on, and take the marbles out of the oven and dump them right away into the ice water. Now I'm actually not going to do it the oven way because I'm using a very small amount of marbles here. I'm going to do it on the stove top. Now I did some research a while back and mostly I've seen people crackle marbles that are round, the round shaped marbles, but these are flat back. And everybody else that I saw that did it put theirs in the oven for 20 minutes at 500. Well, I don't want to wait for my oven to reach 500, and not just that, but I live in Florida and it's been really hot and my AC's been broken, so that is also another reason why I would rather do it on the stove. Now, I only found two other people online that did it on the stove top, the crackling marbles, but they're, again, their marbles were round, which I don't really think the shape um, matters, although you can, you know, move them around by going like that easier than you can these because these are flat back. Um, one of the people that I watched that did it on the stove recommended to leave the marbles in the pan for 30 minutes and I did and I think the 30 minutes was way too long because it actually damaged my pot just a little bit. See the polka dots spots from the first time I did it? So what I did is I thought you know what they got pretty hot fast, so I think 10 minutes will do it. So I did 10 minutes and it worked just fine. I got the same amount of crackling look in the marble and it was a lot faster than waiting on the oven to reach its temperature, so I would much rather do it on the stove. Now, if you do have an older pot, I will recommend you to use that older pot. Um, stainless steel does seem best for doing this. 
Um, I'm thinking that the marbles could possibly ruin a nonstick pot, so I don't want to recommend you to use that. But um, something else you could do if you don't have old pots to use, you can just go to a thrift store and buy an extremely cheap used pot and use that. So um, I'm going to use this pot again, and I think that the 30 minutes is actually what ruined it. I think if I just did it for 10, I probably would not have had any damage. And when I did do it for just 10, 10 minutes, I didn't see more damage. The It looks the same. So um, go ahead, if you want to do it this way, put your marbles into your pan. Turn your oven on too high, or your stove, that's what I mean. And what I'm going to do is wait for the heat to rise. Because when you put your pan into the oven, the heat is already on. It's been on for a while. It already reached that 500 degrees. So I just wait till I start filling the heat. I don't touch the pan. I'm just putting my hand there. And I'm waiting for the heat to rise. And when I start filling the heat to rise, then I put my lid on. And I'll set a 10 minute timer. Which I don't feel the heat rising yet. Okay. Okay, so here it comes. I'm, I'm starting to feel the heat rise now, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, put my lid on. The lid helps keep the heat in. And I'm going to set a 10-minute timer. Okay? And just like with the stove, while that is, while this is sitting in here for 10 minutes, you want to get a bowl of water and ice. And again, don't use a glass bowl because it could possibly shatter on you. Use either a metal bowl or a plastic bowl. Okay, so go ahead and make sure that you have your ice water ready because when this alarm goes off, we're going to dump these marbles right into the ice water and they're going to crackle for us. Okay, so my alarm just went off, 10 minutes. I'm going to take the lid off of my pot and drop them right into the ice. I don't know if you can hear that noise or not, but it's pretty loud. Ooh, that blue one's pretty. Okay, I'm just going to wait a minute until they are completely done crackling, and then I'm going to take them out and show you. I took them out, I put them on a towel, and I'm drying them off, and this is what they all look like. Now, this one here is a darker one, and it, it is kind of hard to see the crackles in it, but I'm thinking maybe if I put a white nail polish on the other side, it'll show the crackle more. So um, here's the blue one. It's very pretty. So that one looks like. Here's the clear. So this is what they look like. When you're done crackling your marbles, make sure they are completely dry before you move on to this step here. And like I said earlier, you don't have to coat the back of them with nail polish. You can just leave them clear and glue them onto your ring blank. But I'm going to go ahead and coat the back of my marble because I really love how it looks. And I'm going to use the same color that I used in this ring. It's super easy to do. You want to hold mostly the top of the marble like this and paint the back of it. And you might have to do a couple of coats depending on how you want your marble to look. Okay, so that's one coat. I'm going to flip it over and show you what it looks like. And it's not very dark, so I will probably do um, three coats on this because it is a very light nail polish. Okay. So I'm just going to let this dry face down and when it's dry I'll do another coat and if I still think it needs a third coat I'll go ahead and do that. So while this is drying, when all my coats are done, I'm going to show you how to make the ring blanks. And then when we're done making the ring blanks, this should be dry and ready to glue onto our ring blank. Go ahead and cut your 24 inches of 22 or 20 gauge wire. And once it's cut, you want to take your ring mandrel and find what size you want to make. Now I want to make a size 9, but my ring is going to shrink, so I have to make it a size 10 and then it will shrink to a 9. 
So I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to put the ends together and I want to keep uh, these ends even as much as I can possible because when I get to the end of my ring blank and I have to, let me show you, wrap this around my ring, I need enough wire on each side. So I'm putting my ends together just like this and I'm going to find center of my wire and bend it. Okay. Then I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to put it on my ring mandrel right here at a size 10. Now I like to have my ring bands four wires wide so I'm going to do that. Now right here I am on the size 10 and you have to be careful when you're wrapping this around because these wires want to get twisted. See this bottom one wants to go up and now my top one wants to go down. So make sure that they don't get twisted, okay? So I'm going to do four wraps around, okay? I'm going to take my other wire on the top and wrap that around, okay? So now I have three wraps looking at the back of my ring band. And I'm going to take my wire and put it together find my longer wire and I'm going to wrap that longer wire around one more time so I have four wide. Okay. Now I need to make sure that I'm at a 10. Right here is my 10. And I need my wires to be the same length. So this one is a little bit longer. So I'm going to pull on the shorter one and try to get it to be the same length is my other wire and I'm almost there. Okay. So I'm there now. Okay, so looking at the back you could see that I have four wires and I need to make sure that these don't get crossed because I want my wires to be stacked. So I'm going to pull both of these wires, make sure that it's on the size that I want, which is a 10, and I'm going to pull this very tight, okay? So my wires and my ring band are even, okay? And I do still have one that is just a tad bit longer, so I'm going to pull the shorter wire a little bit, and that's going to make it longer, okay? So here I am four bands all the way around. I have a wire here in the bottom and one on the top. I'm going to pull this again and I'm going to pinch it right here at the ring mandrel. And then I'm going to make a twist. Okay? Just like this. I'm going to press the twist down so it looks like this. Okay? Push this nice and tight onto my ring mandrel and then I'm gonna start twisting my wire so I don't know how good you could see that can you see that okay I'm going to put my thumb on the top of this and press down and I'm going to wrap one wire at a time around the center here and it's going to make a swirl and I found that it's very important to put one of your fingers on top of this to keep the swirl as flat as possible. So I just wrapped this one around. I'm going to put my finger on this and wrap this one. Swap hands. Wrap this one. Okay. Just like this. You can see how it's looking. This one I need to pull tighter. Now I'm going to wrap this wire. Swap hands. And I'm just making a swirl. The swirl doesn't have to be very fancy because we will be gluing a marble on top of it. But you do want the swirl to be as flat as possible so your marbles sit right, sit right on it. Okay, so this is what my swirl looks like so far. I'm going to keep going. Take this one, go around. Swap hands. Make sure you press hard with your thumb on top of the swirl. It's looking good.
You want to check it every once in a while. Now I just keep going until I have a little bit of wire on each side to wrap around my ring band. And I'm almost there. Okay, at this point I get my chain nose pliers. My wire starts getting shorter and I have to pull it because you'll see loose wire. Okay, I'm going to go around again with this one. Okay, a little bit more, and this is what we have. I'm going to pull this one a little bit, do the same thing on this one, hold the wire with my chain nose pliers, I'm going to put my thumb over it and I'm going to pull it in this direction. So when I let go, it goes straight with the ring mandrel, okay? And here is what our ring looks like. Okay, now what I'd like to do before I wrap this is shape my ring band and get these wires to stack better. So I'm just going to take my hammer with a nylon side and I'm going to run it down the ring mandrel and hit my wires. Okay. And you can see they're starting to stack better. And once I get it to look like this, where they're stacking better, I'll take it off, and sometimes it will get stuck on there, so you have to hit from the opposite direction. And I'll flip it over to the other side, slide it back down, and I'll hit it again. Okay. Now to harden the wire, you want to hit it directly like this. So I'm going to hold the mandrel really tight, and I'm going to do a couple racks. All the way around. Okay. Again, if you see the wire separating, go ahead and straighten them out. Like this, okay? Now I'm going to take this off. And here it goes. So this is what it looks like so far. And I do still have some gaps, so I'm going to put it back on there and I'm going to hit it some more so I can try to make it the wires stay together. Okay, it's looking better. I'm going to flip it over. See if I can wrap the wires around, if I can get it off. Okay, it's not completely perfect, but it is a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them around my ring band, and then once I do that, then I'll hammer uh, this some more, and it should work hard it more, and also these will probably stay together better. Okay, so this is how my swirl looks, and it's not that great looking. So, I will have to adjust it some. And I think it's this wire. Yeah, it's this one right here that's making it look weird. Okay. Now, if you put your ring like this, you could see that this top is flat, and that is what we want. We want this to be very flat. Over here is a little high, but we could probably fix that by pinching it with our uh, chain nose pliers. Okay. So, let's see. This wire over here looks the best, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap that one. So I'm going to put my wires together, bend this down through the inside of my ring. So I just wrapped it around, okay? Now I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to squish this, all right? And then I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to wrap it around again. So there's two wraps. Now I still have some leftover wire, so I'm going to go around again. Now if you don't have enough wire to go around again, you have like this much wire, then go ahead and trim it. 
Now you do have to worry about this poking your finger, depending on where you cut it at. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. You can see I have a gap there. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to push this up so it meets my other wire. Okay, and there it goes. I think I might bring this up here so it doesn't pinch my finger. Okay, I'm going to bend this down. And also I found if you can push this down right at the point, it, you won't get poked by it. Okay, so this one I actually have uh, two or three wraps around. My other ones I had to do two. Okay, so now I'm over here, and this is the wire that's kind of making the ring look strange. And if you need to, you can unravel this to get a better wrap. Okay. Now I like how it looks, right there. So I'm going to hold it in position and put this wire through my ring band. Okay, and I'm going to squish it with my chain nose pliers, just like that, and I'm going to wrap it again. Squish it, and push it into my other wrap, so my wrap is straight. Okay, I'm going to wrap it around again. I think I need to squish it more first, though. Okay. Wrap this under again. I want to get it to match my other side. And I'm going to wrap it to the top. Okay, just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my tail off to make it match this side. Flip this over. I'm going to cut it right there. And squish this down. Okay. And here is my ring blank. Okay, I'm going to put this back onto the mandrel because as you could see, I kind of bent it. And I'm going to work hard on it more. So just like this. Okay. And I'm just going to work hard. I need to take this off and flip it around. Okay. And hit it some more. So once you get the ring band to your liking, mine looks pretty good and the top. If you want your top to be more round, and looking at mine, it is kind of flat up here and rounded on this side. Uh, what you could do about that if you want it to be more round is just take your chain nose pliers, hold this on your finger, and you could squeeze this very gently and fix that shape. Now you can see that it's very round. Now what's really important is this needs to be flat, and as you can see this side is taller. So what I did before to fix that is I just took my chain nose pliers and I bent. I pulled this down. Okay, let's see if that helped. Oh, it did help a lot. Okay, so now we are ready to glue on our marble. I need to go make sure that it's completely dry though. Oh, I have a wire sticking up here. I need to fix that. And this one's sticking up a little bit. Probably did it because I took the hammer to it again. So I'm going to press this down, make sure that it is not po poking up to the other side. Okay. Now we're all done with this ring blank and we are ready to glue on our marble. It looks very nice and flat. So now I just have to glue my marble onto my ring. And because of all the wires in this, the marble really bonds to the, 
the ring. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to put it on my ring blank. And I do like to put a nice amount because the more I got, the better it's going to stay on. Okay, that should be enough. Cap my glue and put this on. I like to put it on like this. Press it down. It looks good. Okay. And I just press it down. I go back to it and I press it down some more if I have to, just to make sure it's really bonded onto the marble. Okay. Now all you have to do is let this dry, and usually I make these at night time, and I'll let them dry overnight, and then the next day I can wear them. This is it. I hope you enjoyed making these rings as much as I have enjoyed making them. Mm -hmm. So please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching.